What is up my dudes? Welcome back to another video. Today we are finally doing it and you've asked for it. This is the valve adjustment on this 2003 Suzuki Bandit 1200. If you are also someone who owns a Suzuki Bandit 1200 between 2001 to 2005, these are known as the K bikes, then this video is going to be super useful for you. As far as the other models and years of Suzuki Bandits, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to apply to them, especially with the specs. So I would refer to your manual in particular for your bike. I'm gonna hopefully give you enough information in this video so you don't actually have to have the manual on you. As you can see with my bike, it's already taken apart. I'm already to the valves, but I'm gonna go over how to do everything step-by-step. Step. We'll even start with how to remove the gas tank just so that I can walk you through if this is something you're nervous about doing it's gonna be very easy if you need to you can skip ahead to the part where we just talk about adjusting the valves so let's go ahead and jump right in and get into this job right so here's my bike which is already pulled apart but in case you wanted to start from the very beginning we have got the key here which you would use to take off your seat down there and you'd pop your seat off. I feel like I don't need to show you how to do that, but I mean, maybe someone didn't know that that's for step one, all right? So this doesn't actually need to come off, but this is what you're going to see once you take off your seat. This is the little anchor where the seat goes into. And these two bolts here are going to be what holds your tank on. Your tank, it's just a couple of 10 mil. You just pull those out. There'll be some little cushions on there and then you'll be able to remove your tank. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go over this as quickly as possible because I'm afraid it doesn't quite make as much sense without actually having the gas tank on here. This is where your carburetors are gonna be, but right up in here is where your fuel valve is gonna be hanging out right underneath this frame. So the way that you kind of need to do to remove it is I like to push the tank to the right because all once you remove these two bolts, that it's attached to, all it does is slip underneath here. There's a lip on the tank. So you just wiggle it out from this lip, scooch the tank over to the right. And what that is going to do, you can put like towels and stuff if you want to protect your frame. I, I obviously don't care. But then I'll take a block of wood or something similar to prop up the tank just enough so I have space to reach in with a long screwdriver and you'll be able to either unscrew or some long pliers to get off that fuel clip from the fuel hose. Once you can get that fuel hose disconnected, there's also going to be a vacuum hose and just get those disconnected and have, make sure that the fuel sender connector is disconnected and you should be able to just pull it right off. I think I kind of speed through pulling this off in, in my other video of the Suzuki Bandit. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna mount the camera up and let's start talking about how to get your valve cover off. Once you have your gas tank off, this is what you're going to see in your engine. This is your valve cover. It's gonna have eight of these bolts that sit here, two on the front and back, and then you're going to have four of these banjo style bolts that flow oil to your cams. These eight bolts that hold it in all have a seal underneath them. The four banjo bolts also have a crush washer underneath them. The two in the front and back don't really seal, so they're not gonna have anything on there. The only other thing attached to your valve cover is going to be these two oil lines that do have o-rings underneath them and there's two bolts on each one you will need to replace those o-rings i always find that they are no good once i pull everything off and this is also going to be your breather piece here it's going to have a vent hose coming out of it it's very easy to take off this also has a gasket underneath it that i've never found that i needed to replace I've never found that it leaks in the different bandits that I've had. So honestly, I just make sure everything is really clean before I put it back together. I don't typically replace these seals. I will put a little bit of sealant and make sure they are cleaned up, but they are easy enough to replace if you find that they're leaking really badly. What you do need to replace is your actual valve cover gasket. Your valve cover gasket is rubber and sometimes they're okay to reuse if you know that it's been replaced recently. Honestly, I'll only use it one, two, three times tops before I replace it. And if bits of this come off, when you pull this off, you definitely want to get a new one. I will often take this off before I try and take the actual cover itself off, just because this takes up quite a bit of space and I need that every little bit of space I can get to get this 
over the cam chain. And you'll see what I mean once I show the bike itself. The manual recommends removing all of your ignition coils, but for me, it's easier to just use this, remove it, so I don't have to replace as much. It gives me just enough space to remove it without having to take everything apart. It's already so much work to get to this. At this point, you do not need to take out your spark plugs, and I would honestly leave them in if you haven't already blown off the dirt from your valve cover because there's probably a chance that it's collected a bit of sand and dust and stuff. You definitely don't want those falling into your cylinder. You are going to notice that there are a few bolts on each side here. Those do not need to come off. Oh, this is really dirty. Also note that each one of the spark plug holes, the spark plug wells, has its own individual gasket. So in addition to the valve cover gasket that you need to replace, you also need to get each one of these. There is two of each kind, they're not all the same. So two are going to be that sort of shape, like a Mickey Mouse bear shape, and then the other ones are only gonna have the one hole on the side there. There's also two screws beneath the vent breather cover. These do not need to be removed. That's only holding in the uh, cam chain guide. Now it may take a little bit of work to get that valve cover off because chances are maybe no one's done it before or no one's really messed with it. It's gonna get really stuck on there just being baked on after each heat cycle every time you ride the bike. So like this one, I haven't cleaned it all off. Uh, but to get the valve cover off, if you find that it's being really, really stubborn, uh, just get a rubber mallet, uh, give it a couple of wax, keep hitting it around the edges, doing your best. Uh, you definitely don't want to like stick anything in there, like a screwdriver or a chisel or a flathead or something like that, because you could really easily damage the sealing surfaces, and that's something that you really don't want to deal with. So when it comes to getting the valve cover off and slid out, honestly, you can slide it out either way. You just want to make sure all your wires are moved your cables and whatnot, and this cam chain is what's gonna get in the way with these uh, two camshaft sprockets. What we're looking at here is your timing, and what you'll need is a 19 mil spanner or wrench, and that's gonna be used to turn the motor over so that you can set the timing, so you can check your valves. There is a mark that's gonna have a T on it, and you wanna line that mark up with this thing with bobber sensor here. And what this is going to do is you put your spanner on here, you turn it clockwise until the T lines up with that. And yes, when you remove this cover, that is another gasket that you're going to need to order. I've tried piecing it back together and putting some sealant and it's always going to leak if you don't do it right. So just get a new gasket. As per the manual, once you line up this T, you're also gonna wanna line up your camshafts. So your camshafts are going to have markings on them. One side has the line on there, the other side is going to have this sort of indentation, and the same goes for your exhaust cam. It's going to have the indentation, and so they're always going to be opposite of each other like that, and depending on where this marking is, is going to say where you check your valves. So once your timing is lined up with the T mark and the notches on your camshafts are both pointing outwards like this, then we're going to be able to check cylinder one, intake and exhaust, cylinder two, just the exhaust, and then cylinder three, just the intake. So here we are on the left side of the bike. We are looking at uh, cylinder number one here. It's gonna have four valves per cylinder. This side with your carburetors is going to be your intake. And obviously the side with your exhaust are, is going to be your exhaust valve. At this point, in order to turn the engine over, you should have already taken out your spark plugs. You do wanna make sure you wanna put something in there. Don't worry about stuffing rags and then you know anything falling in there. I just take blue towels that are nice and clean, fresh, and shove them in there. Nothing's gonna happen. That is your valve clearances for the intake and the exhaust. It gives you a range of what they say is acceptable. So as long as it is within that range, I would say you're pretty good. Now, when you're adjusting your valves, you already have everything open. If your valves across the board on your intake or across the board on your exhaust are slightly different, I would take that time to actually adjust so that they are all the same clearances. You don't want your cylinders all running on slightly different variances. You want them all running the same and take note of everything, write down everything that you do so that you know what was adjusted, what was good, what was bad, 
even if it was within range what you did to it. So what you're gonna need is a set of thickness gauges that go that small, and I've actually had to pick up a couple different sets. And I don't have the exact values of 0.10 to 0.15 millimeter, uh, so I do have a 0.13 millimeter thickness, I have a 0.15 millimeter thick thickness, and then for the exhaust, I use a 0.20. Let's get right in there and show you how I do this. So we've got the bike set as the manual says so that we can check cylinder one intake and exhaust. So let's go ahead and stick for the exhaust that clearance 0.18 to 0.23 millimeter. So what you're checking is in between this adjuster here and the top of the valve. And as you can see, I've got just a slight snugness on there because I've already set these <laughs> so I don't have to adjust them and I'm just going to slide that and it's perfect and like I said you can kind of see that is right in between the adjuster this rocker here and oh once I pull that out you'll know which valves to check because your rocker arms are a little bit loose so if it's really tight and it's all super tight double check your timing and double check where your cams are on the opposite side of the engine to make sure that you are in the right spot and it's okay to do this two or three times to make sure that you are in the right spot but when you know you're in the right spot you'll be able to move these guys a little bit so let's say that you stuck your feeler gauge underneath there and it was wrong and it was or let's say you couldn't stick your feeler gauge underneath there that means that your Valve is too tight. So let me show you guys how to adjust that. So the top of these adjusters here are like a square shape. And so what I have is this fancy Suzuki tool specifically made to go on top of these adjusters and hold them while you loosen up the nut so that you can turn this one way or the other, tighter or looser, to make your adjustment before you tighten it down. Now, do you need this fancy little tool? Absolutely not. And you can use like a little tiny adjustable wrench or something like that. But having this tool, because I love bandits and because this is something I'm gonna do more than once, uh, it was worth it to me to get it. So I'll put a link to the part number where you can look this up wherever you are and see if you can order one. You most likely have to order one. So this is what I like to have. Continuing on, uh, let's say that this was tight and we could not get our feeler gauge, the 0.18, is as tight as it should be and let's say it was down to the 0.15 and you're like whoa that's a lot tighter that's not within the specification so what you would do is find a way to hold this part down and then you would hold your wrench the correct way because you're not a dummy this is a size 8 by the way and you would loosen crack that nut loose so that you can turn this bit here and either make it tighter or looser and what you would want to do is loosen it up a little bit tighten that nut back down and then stick your feeler gauge back underneath and see if that value is where you want it to be. Personally, I like it to have just a little bit of resistance on there and you'll get a feel for where it should be. You can always stick uh, different thicknesses through, whether that be smaller or larger and get a better gauge of exactly where it's at. But no matter what you want to do, like I said, you want to set these both the same and set them the same across the board. Now your intake valve clearance should be 0.10 to 0.15 on the scale here. And I've got a 0.13 millimeter. I don't remember if I sent th set these to 0.13. Yeah, I did. 0.13 is just right in the middle. So where you set your valve clearances in that scale is totally up to you. As long as they are within the spec, I would say you're fine. Next, we're going to do cylinder two. And that's this one right up here, number two, just the exhaust, and then cylinder three, just the intake. Now that we've got those valve clearances all checked, we've double checked them, we're going to take our 19 millimeter spanner and we're gonna turn the engine clockwise and mark that T up again. And we're gonna change the position of the notches on our camshafts so that we can finish checking the rest of the valves. Big nut. Turn the engine. Make sure we are right on that 
t. So now you can see that those notches that were previously on the outside are facing in, and that means that we can check the rest of the clearances on our valves. So since cylinder one is completely finished, we're, that's done, we're gonna do the second cylinder's intake, which is what we skipped the last go around, the third cylinder's exhaust, which is what also we skipped, and then intake and exhaust on cylinder number four. Now, like I said, when these are ready to go, you're gonna be able to wiggle them. So you wanna take your feeler gauge and run underneath, underneath the adjuster. And like I said, just a slight drag. Uh, I've set mine all up so they have a slight drag. This one, maybe you can even see better how that goes underneath there and it'll hold it in place. You'll get a feel for it. Honestly, what's really nice about these valves is that they are adjustable. So you don't have to pull your cams off. You don't have to make sure you don't mess up your timing. It's pretty straightforward. So that's pretty much it. That is the valve adjustment done. Now you can go through again and check, move your timing, uh, check the cams again, and make sure, go through all of the steps twice to make sure that all of your clearances are set correctly. They're set in the right spot because we are human and we can make mistakes. We can have it slightly off just a little bit. Maybe not the clearance is as good as we thought. So when you're checking them, you can even go through twice just checking the clearances. Um, after you adjust them, I would definitely go through twice and make sure that everything is set to where you did set it. So something you can do as you're adjusting it is to keep a journal of what you adjusted it to and what it was actually at. If one of your valve clearances was really tight, try and find a smaller thickness gauge uh, that fits in there so you can make a note of just where that was. It can really help you in the future if you end up having any sort of engine issues or weird sounds that's going on, if something was really loose or really tight and you feel that you're having an issue on that cylinder, you'll know oh, that's right, that cylinder was really tight on this particular valve, and you can keep track and sort of have a record of what you're doing to your bike. Once your valve clearances are all checked, everything's good, you wanna make sure to clean up your entire sealing surface, cleaning up the valve cover as well, and then we'll be ready to reinstall the new gasket, put the valve cover back on. We could talk about putting it all back together, and all of that awesomeness. Let's go. So from this point on, I think I'm gonna use the GoPro uh, just because while my DSLR is really nice and gives really nice footage, GoPro is good enough and I want you guys to be able to see first person what I'm doing. The DSLR looks great, but it's a little bit harder to set up with the lighting. So what I'm gonna do here is take a clean rag and wipe down the ceiling surface. Oops, just stepped on that with my dirty boot. Take a little bit of a breaker parts cleaner. And we are just going to go over our ceiling surface here, making sure that it's not oily. You can kind of see the dirt that's coming off of there. Not oily, not dirty, um, so that we just get a really nice clean seal. I've already gone through and picked off any of the remaining gasket or sealant from the factory. Um, and from the manual recommended, there is sealant that goes on uh, these four points here, but I don't have that sealant. I use something a little bit different as far as like a gasket maker, it works well enough. And I've already cleaned up this side cover really well. It was a lot of sealant on these ends where they don't really match up. And I wonder if that's why. I wonder if that's why it was leaking. Oh, glory be. Uh, one good habit to have if you're working in your garage is to put a piece of cardboard down. And I always save like tons of old cardboard. I usually have more stacked up there. As you can see, I'm using one there just because it's easy to clean up afterwards, especially if you don't have a ton of like counter top workbench space other projects taking up the space and this just makes cleanup easy then your floors don't get all friggin stained with oil and you know I, I like to take the fun out of it you probably see hopefully you can see just how friggin dirty this thing is it's literally like rocks stuck in there um so let's uh definitely give this a good uh, scrub a dub and dub and all right, I don't think this is why you guys watch this video to clean stuff, so I'm gonna go ahead, finish cleaning this up, and then we'll skip right ahead to putting it back on. So I've gotten this all cleaned up really nice. I've also gotten that gasket cover cleaned up. That's ready to go, valve cover. I've also got these ready to go. Pull these guys out, put in our spark plugs. JR9B. Of course, I don't have my spark plug gap checker. Dang it, it's upstairs. And I got it, all right, so. The gap for these 0.24 to 0.2028, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0.024, 0
028. Beautiful. That works for me. Does that work for you guys? Sounds good to me. I need some anti-seize. Give me that anti-seize. Yeah. Ooh. Oh man, this stuff is old. Seen some glory days. Oh yeah. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like an old garage. That's how it should smell. Put a glob on there. And then just give the rest of them a dab off of here. Whenever I'm putting in spark plugs, I always like to go the opposite direction, like you're loosening it. And then you start to tighten it. And it's just to help the thread seat correctly. Because if you, sh you should not have any resistance when screwing in a spark plug into this engine. And if you do, don't continue to try and screw it in. <laughs> If you're doing your valve cover gasket and you don't see this lip here on one of the ends, that definitely goes in the back because it would not fit in the front. So these gaskets are going to have, uh, you can obviously see one edge has got sticking out basically and, and that's going to go into this. It's not going to go the opposite way. It's not going to sit like that. So it's just going to come off. It's got to be pushed into place there. I feel like I might have the most clearance on the other side. So I'm going to attempt snaking it through on the other side. Hopefully you guys will be able to see what I'm doing here. I don't know, so I'm gonna try and get up underneath here. Oh yeah. I think that's just a zip tie, yep. A little bit. Okay. Oh, all right. Woo! <laughs> Before I try and push this down, I'm gonna make sure that it's set into place on each side here and go all the way around and make sure that it's gonna fall into place. That's probably what's keeping it up. Yep. There we go. Oh, I'm not sure what angle is gonna be best for this. Oh boy. That's all up stuck in there. Now we can get that down. Push that into place. That into place. Yeah. If your valve cover's kinda rocking around still, you want to make sure that you're pushing in the dowel pin. So whether they're in the cylinder head or they're in the valve cover, just make sure you're pushing them in. And then check all the way around. Make sure your gasket's not pinching out or pinching in. You should be able to see it all the way around here. And you can even feel it with your finger. Same thing with the spark plug gaskets. Uh, you'll be able to see them from the outside here. You can even kind of feel them partly with your finger. And that just lets you know that everything is set right and it's ready to be tightened up. When you're tightening up your valve cover bolts, you wanna make sure that you do it in a pattern, um, basically going from one side to the other. I, I'm sure this has got a pattern that they explain in here, but honestly, it's the same with any other type of valve cover, any sort of cylinder head. You wanna go across each other and keep doing the opposite sides. The whole idea is to bring the valve cover down as evenly as possible. If you tighten one side and go all the way across the other edge, then you have this sort of effect that goes and you can end up bending or warping your valve cover, which is not something you really want to do. Yeah, uh, get all your bolts back in. I'm going to clean this guy up, which I've stepped on a couple times. I'm telling you, this thing is, is nothing wrong with it. Get the new O-rings and the oil lines. That is your valve clearance done. That's it. That should have been everything you needed to do in this video. As far as getting your bike back together, you probably don't have your carburetors off like I do and have an absolute mess to put back together, but I've done this so many times, I'm not worried about it. So uh, putting your bike back together at this point, I think if you're just doing this, it's probably just getting all these back in there hooking up any uh, vents and stuff that you had to pull off there and then putting your tank back on which is as easy as just putting the fuel line your vent line and hooking up your uh, fuel level sender so if you have a suzuki bandit i really hope that this video helped you and thank you for checking it out and watching if you're a regular subscriber i appreciate you guys tuning in i know not everybody out there has got this kind of bike a bandit but for those of you who are looking for a valve adjustment I tried to make it as clear as possible. Hopefully that helped, hopefully it worked and you're able to get the job done. If you like this video and you wanna help me out, please consider signing up for my Patreon. I'm gonna have links to everything 
down in the description below. One dollar a month is going to get you all the behind the scenes goodies about what's going on with my projects, early video access, all kinds of fun stuff like that. If a monthly subscription is not your thing, that is totally fine. I also have a tea public with the link down in the description where you can get things like my icon and other fun designs that I have up there. Not only are you supporting my channel, you are getting something cool in return. None of that sounds like fun and you would just like to get something for free. You can subscribe and continue to watch fun, informative, weird videos of me working on motorcycles. <laughs> so if you are attempting this yourself, Good luck out there. I wish you all the best and thank you guys again for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Yo! Yeah.